Hey everybody, welcome back to Why Not RV. On this week's episode, we're going to talk about the basics of RV electricity. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to learn more and make less mistakes while RVing. Also, come check us out on Facebook. We have a group where we're doing zero politics, zero bullying, no negativity, you know, strictly RVers trying to help other RVers. So I'll put a link in the description below for that group. Um, also, we now have a website, whynotrvusa.com. And lastly, we are now officially on Patreon at patreon.com backslash whynotrv. This is going to be the basics of RV electricity. Next week, we're going to do a follow-up video with some more advanced information. But to get started, we're going to talk about AC versus DC and what those two systems are and how they actually work together to create this wonderful harmony of RV electricity. <laughs> AC power has to come from somewhere. So let's go outside and I'm going to show you a couple of different ways you can get AC power. Number one and the most common way to get shore, uh, AC power is shore power, uh, plugging into a pedestal, plugging into an actual outlet. Another way of having AC power is having a generator which produces AC power when it is on and running. The last main way, of course, there's always gonna be someone that's gonna create something else up there, but the last main way of getting AC power is with an inverter. Now this is a pretty advanced inverter, but any kind of inverter is another way to get AC power. DC power, on the other hand, only comes from one place, and that's your battery. So what is AC power? Typically, it just means that it's 120 volts Basically, the, the easy way to think about it is it's your house power. Everything that's in a normal house, that's AC power. So for an RV, that's usually where we reference 50 amp versus 30 amp. It's either 50 amp, which is two legs of 120 volts AC power, or 30 amp, which is one leg of 30 amp AC power. So let me show you what that might break down, and, and let's, let's see if we can take a closer look at that. So behind me here is an electric panel. Now, right here is a 50 amp breaker. That's uh, two poles of 120 volts of AC power. That's a 50 amp breaker that goes to my RV. Now, what that means is because it has two breakers, but it's actually only one breaker, is it's two lines of 120 volts. So right below it is just a 20 amp breaker. And, you know, pretend like this is 30 amp, and that's all you need for a 30 amp RV. So 50 amp RVs have two legs and 30 amp RVs only have one leg. So where does the power go after it leaves the breaker? It goes to an outlet. So this is a 50 amp RV outlet, which means, let's see if I can do this. We have 120 volts over here. We have 120 volts over here. We have a neutral and we have a ground. So that's how that breaker is wired is that breaker supplies the two lines of 120 volts and then inside the rest of the panel, it gets grounded and to the neutral bar, which I have a whole nother video on installing this. You can check that out, uh, episode two, um, uh, installing a 50 amp circuit. So you can look at that to get some more information on that, but that's basically all a 50 amp outlet is. Again, 120 volt, 120 volt, neutral, ground. Now, 30 amps, let's just plug this in here. Thirty amps is pretty similar, except for it's only one leg of 120 volts, the neutral and the ground, and that's that's it. It's just one leg of 120, a neutral and a ground. So this adapter right here takes a 50 amp down to a 30 amp just by basically eliminating one of these two ports here. So when it comes through here, you know they 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 made these both metal, but really they don't need to be like one of these could basically be plastic because all it happens inside this thing is it eliminates one of those wires and just goes down to the other one. I, I, I don't remember if it comes off of you know this side or the other side, but it doesn't really matter. The point is it's only one of those legs that comes out the bottom. It's not like it combines the two of them. It's only one leg. So what happens to the power once it comes out of that outlet, it goes into your cord and into the RV? Well, it comes here to your distribution panel. Now, again, this is a 50 amp distribution panel. So we have a 50 amp breaker down here, which again has the same two legs, two individual poles that we talked about back at the main breaker. And it's essentially the exact same thing that's out there. It has two different legs of 120 volts. Now, sometimes these are in the middle. Sometimes they're on the end. Mine that's on the end 
basically what happens is this leg of power, it's this very first spot, feeds 120 volts into every other breaker down the line. Whereas this second 120 volt leg feeds the other breakers going down the line. So this panel is broken up into two different legs of 120 volts of power, meaning one air conditioner is on one leg and the other air conditioner is on the other leg. That's why a 50 amp RV can run two ACs at one time versus if they plug it into a 30 amp adapter and you're only getting one uh, leg of 120 volts of power, sometimes two, R two ACs will pop that breaker because it goes over 30 amps. And that's why we have two different legs of power. So you can distribute two separate 120 volt legs of power across all your different things inside the RV. So let's talk about that. So that 120 volts, again, whether you're on 30 amp or 50 amp, doesn't really matter. We're just talking about AC power at this point, comes into the distribution panel, goes through all your outlets and all your different appliances. So that's why sometimes, you know, you have just, there's a dedicated breaker just for a microwave. There's a dedicated breaker usually just for the fridge, depending on the RV, uh, just for your washer and dryer, just for AC number one, AC number two. And then you'll have, you know, certain outlets, you know, like you got all your slide outlets on one breaker, you got the bedroom outlets on another breaker, just depends on the manufacturer of how they wired up your RV. But typically they have a few different outlets per one breaker that that 120 volts feeds. And that's how all your outlets and stuff in the RV get 120 volts of AC power. So a lot of people, when they first get an RV, they say, well, my lights are working, but why isn't my fridge or why isn't my microwave or why aren't the outlets working? That's because the lights work off of the DC circuit. So to talk about that, let's talk about one more thing with AC power, and that's the converter. The AC power comes into that distribution panel I just showed you, and it will feed the converter, which then converts AC power into DC power to charge your batteries and to maintain all of your DC appliances whenever you are hooked up to full power. That way it's not draining your batteries all the time. So now let's talk about DC power. So here we are at the start of our DC power, our battery. Now in this RV, I actually have a couple of different batteries and I'm actually gonna be upgrading the battery bank here in the next couple of weeks. Um, but let's just pretend we're just talking about one battery because that's all that really matters is a positive and a negative on a battery. This battery is not only is it being fed from that converter to be charged, but then it is also then feeding everything throughout the RV. Every RV is wired up differently. Some have little cutoff switches like this. Um, you know, I installed, uh, you know, DC to DC battery charger, which that's another episode that I have. I also installed, let's see if I can get an angle on it, that little piece back here. This is a battery monitor. So I can come in and look at my battery monitor right here. And I know all the different uh, things that's happening with my DC circuit. I know what's happening inside there. Uh, how much voltage is being used, amperage, and all that kind of stuff. So once your DC power leaves your batteries and it goes inside, uh, let's let's show you that and show you where it goes from there. So the first thing that that battery does, it comes to this, which is basically the same thing as the AC distribution panel, only now this is a DC distribution panel. And some RVs, these are combined, they're one big piece and you have all these little fuses that are DC power, and then you have all the breakers that are AC power. So on here, I have a little list of exactly what every single fuse is for. And it's really convenient that these little lights, that if any of the fuses are burnt out, that light will be on. So I instantly know when I open this thing up, if one of the fuses popped. That's really all you need to know about the DC side of things is when it comes into this fused area, it's just like it coming into a breaker. If something on the DC circuit isn't working, this is the first place you should come to check your fuses. Let's just talk about a couple things that the DC circuit uh, gives power to. Your TV booster or your antenna booster, if you have something like that, almost all of your lighting inside the RV is DC powered. It's almost always coming from the batteries. There's very, very few times that it's coming from the AC side of things. Um, your slides themselves are usually powered or the hydraulic system is powered from the DC side of things. You have, let's see, um, the furnace itself or the water heater has a 12 volt, which is the DC side of things. And it, sometimes they also have 120 volt, you know, dual purpose water heaters or dual purpose furnaces. Um, my furnace is, 12 volt only it runs off the gas <clears throat> excuse me um what that means you know because some people say well it runs off of gas well the 12 volts is what gives it 
the brain power to do what it needs to do and it also spins the fan but anyways uh, so it feeds the furnace um, all your exterior lights the awning is fed off the dc power our refrigerator because it has both 120 volt ac power and the dc power uh, because it runs off of gas off the propane but it needs that 12 volts of dc power in order to turn the brain on to tell it what to do with that gas it doesn't just miraculously use gas willy-nilly um and then uh, our ceiling fans the ceiling fans that suck the air out or sometimes you can turn them the other way and have them blow air in uh, but the vent fans up on on your roof those are also dc powered so all those things are going to work just off your batteries you'll be able to pull your slides in you have lights on you can you know your fridge can stay cold you can turn your furnace on for heat uh, there's almost no cooling power when it comes to dc stuff that's on ac power uh, but that's pretty much it everything else in the rv the outlets your air conditioners stuff like that it's all your washer dryer it's all going to come from ac power that's about as much as I want to confuse you guys for this week. I'm trying to keep it as basic as I can. So that's as much basic information as I can give you on our AC and DC, the overall RV electrical information. Next week, we are going to talk about a little bit more in-depth stuff. We're going to talk about inverters and how those work. We're going to talk about, uh, you know, the generator and getting power from your generator and how that works. We're also going to talk about solar and how that works. Um, so stay tuned for next week. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Shoot me a message on Facebook. Join our group. Um, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Drop a like. Put a comment below. All that fun stuff. Share the channel. I appreciate it. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks again for watching Why Not RV. Have a good one.